decisions. Were you all in the last thing <coughs> when I said about conflict resolution? Well, it is so hard to make decisions that we need the President and the Congress to work together better than we do. <coughs> let, let me just take a second for you to better understand how hard it is to get something done. So you know why I, I may be wrong, but why I think what I think. You got 435 people in the House. You got 100 people in the Senate. I was majority leader, so what I worry about every day is 218. That's the magic number. That's a majority of this. So to get anything <coughs> done, here's the president over here. The president can't do anything. The president is powerless. The president has to get this and 51 here. Okay? The people that set this country up did not want anybody to have the power. They hated the king. They did not want any one person to have the power. They were jealous of power. So they said, you got to get 218 here, 51 here, and then after you pass the bill, then you got to have a conference committee. They have to come up with a, an amalgam of what you passed on both sides. Then it has to go back here and get 51, and back here and get 218, and then and only then can it go to him or her, and they have to sign it. Unbelievable. I mean, it's just, you have to move heaven and earth to get anything done. And if this person is not getting along with these people, it's a disaster. Nothing gets done. When Reagan was president, <coughs> Bush was president, we controlled the Congress, they were constantly vetoing what we did, and then we tried to override the veto. Then if he, if he vetoes it, then you come back, it takes two-thirds of both bodies to override the veto. You've got to have 285 votes, and you've got to have 66 votes to override the veto. So you can see how hard they made it to get things done. Now let me make it even murkier for you, and show you how it's even harder than this. This group of people has a rule in the Senate that says that anybody can talk as long as they want. <laughs> the filibuster. You've heard of the filibuster. Now you may think that's silly. Nobody would ever do that. Do it all the time. One person, one, can say, I don't like that tax bill, so I'm going to get my friends and we're all going to get up and talk <coughs> it to death. We're not going to let it come to a vote. We will never shut up. We will talk 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and wear the other side out. And so to get something else done, they'll drop the bill. And that's what happens. In fact, it's so automatic now, they don't even filibuster anymore. As a senator, I just say, I'm going to filibuster the bill. They don't bring it up. Total power. One senator can stop something from coming up. That's power. So not only is it... <coughs> 51, to overcome the filibuster, you got to have 60 votes. It takes a majority of 60 to do anything in the Senate. So the answer to you, that's a long answer to your question. We're in a complicated world. We have to move. Other countries can move and make decisions. We are having trouble making decisions. And so while we're fooling around over here, you know, we can't decide. Hey, can't, can't fix the health care system, can't do this, can't do that. The other countries are doing it. Japan, our major competitor, has a democracy, but it, up until now really hasn't been much of a democracy. It's kind of been all one party. They can make decisions. They can move. And I believe, and the reason I ran, is that I think sooner or later, either by changing our system, which is impossible, or just by getting people who know how to work together, we got to make some decisions. So I think we need presidents who can work with the Congress. Now, where are we today? Now we got Clinton, the Democrat, as president. Now we got a Republican Congress. Guess what? Block. <coughs> I mean, they are going to send him stuff. He's not going to like some of it. He's going to veto it, and then you get back into the other trap it takes 285 to overcome the veto. We are going to be standing still for a lot of time. 
And it's nobody's fault. I mean, I'm not blaming. There's nobody to blame. It's our system. Our forefathers and mothers did not want anybody to have the power, and they did it beyond their wildest imagination. I mean, they really got it done. And nobody has the power anymore. Our conflict resolution mechanism is 